Okay, hey there, my friends. So I am uh, back in my old stomping grounds in Boulder, Colorado, after having spent a wonderful weekend in New York City, uh, both hanging out with some of my favorite, uh, very favorite spinners in the world, and also collaborating with Noel Cates and uh, Jen Swanson on uh, what we call the Four Ways Project. And if you guys haven't seen the final uh, performance video of that, you should check it out. I'm going to stick the link right here for y'all. Uh, I'm actually really proud of what we came up with, so take a look at it and, uh, and leave us some comments. But anyway, uh, the topic of conversation today is, yes, that's right, we've done this to death, it's toroid flowers. But um, bear with me because this is going to be a slightly different way of thinking about them. Um, I've been putting a lot of thought into how we classify toroid flowers, how, how, how we can differentiate them from each other. And uh, there was a really, really helpful posting on this on the Poi Theory group uh, on Facebook in the past couple of weeks. And it's really helped me kind of crystallize my thinking on this. Um, Namely that, uh, for the most part, when we play around with Toro, we're, we're, we're playing around with cases wherein the uh, axis that the poi plane rotates around is essentially in a north-south place. So if, if for example, um, in this case I'm moving my hand path around, but if I didn't move my hand path around, if I just kept my, my hand stably there, then essentially the, uh, the, the path that the poi changes along in space looks something like this. And I've kind of conceptualized this as being the path that a, uh, a person would travel as they walk from the north to the south pole of a planet uh, as it rotates around on its axis, right? This is also an exercise that Nick Woolsey teaches a lot that he calls orbing. That's meant to help people learn how to straighten their planes out. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it always proceeds from a place where the, uh, the poi plane rotates on that north-south axis, right? But what if I happen to switch the line of the axis? Um, specifically, the way I'm, I'm conceptualizing this part is I'm superimposing an octahedron inside of the sphere, such that each of the pair of points of the octahedron becomes an axis that I can then use to rotate the poi plane around. Really, there could be an infinite number of axes through that sphere, but this, this makes the number smaller and more manageable for me. And you'll see in a moment why I wanted to, uh, to, to stick with a smaller, more manageable number. So, for instance, we've dealt with a top-bottom plane, but if you've played around with the octahedron, you also know that there are side-to-side -side axes and there's a front-to-back axis. So what if instead we set the, uh, the axis front-to-back? Well, in that particular case, we wind up with something more like this, which is uh, more kind of an Arashi-style uh, approach to orbing, right? Although you could argue that it's really the same thing as the Nick Woolsey approach to orbing, uh, just set on its side. But um, I'm going somewhere with this, so, 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 so stick with me and, and, and let's, let, let's just say for the time being that this is something slightly different from that previous uh, shape that we've dealt with, right? Um, okay, so we've dealt with a top to bottom, we've dealt with a forwards to back, but there's also a side to side axis. This is one that we don't normally play with. Um, it feels a little bit awkward, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it, it, it creates a situation like this where we're oscillating between um, a vertical wall plane kind of place and a horizontal plane, right? Okay, so we've got these three axes to play with, but how do we orient them when the hand path is moving? Well, I'm so glad you asked, because um, in, in, in almost all the cases of toroid flowers that we've been playing with so far, we have followed a very, very strict kind of arrangement wherein we're playing with that north to south axis, which is um, it, it's perpendicular both to the axis from which the, the hand is emerging from the body. So if I drew a straight line out from my hand, whichever way I was facing, it's always going to be an axis that is perpendicular to that, but also perpendicular to the instantaneous uh, point of the hand path, right? So we, we've wrapped the hand path back around itself, but in each individual point, you can consider the hand path to be a very, very short straight line, in which case that vertical axis is once again always perpendicular to it. You know, uh, People who know calculus will know this concept as the derivative. We're, we're always at a perpendicular angle to the derivative of the hand path. Cool. So um, as stated before, I've, I've gotten really to think of this as being kind of a planet-like metaphor. A toroid, and of course, we have access to it both in a vertical kind of place and a horizontal kind of place. 
depending upon what our persuasion happens to be. But nonetheless, whether it's a horizontal or a vertical place, we're always rotating that poi plane around at a point where it is perpendicular to both the hand path and the arm as it's coming out of body center, right? So what if we start experimenting with having it rotate around a different axis. So let's say it's always going to rotate around the axis that goes straight out from my hand, in which case we wind up with a very different kind of shape emerging. This is a shape that switches back and forth between uh, a kind of vertical uh, uh, wheel plane kind of place, or buzzsaw kind of place, depending upon how you want to think of it, and a horizontal place that, depending upon your perspective is either, it, well, it, it, it switches back and forth between anti-spin and in-spin, depending upon the side of your body you're on. If I were to perform this in a vertical kind of place, it looks like this. And you see how it switches back and forth between showing the full profile of the, of, uh, the poi plane and a straight profile? Whether I perform this horizontally or whether I perform it vertically, it's always going to switch between these two places in relation to the hand path because uh, the axis is always going to be parallel to uh, the point that the, the line that would be created with my hand going out straight from my body. I've been thinking of this as rather than being a planet kind of motion, as being more the kind of thing that would happen if we were, say, holding on to the axle of a wheel and rotating it around ourselves like this. In fact, you, you can totally conceptualize this by, say, dropping your poi on the ground and rotating it around yourself like that. This would be the path that somebody would follow once again if they're walking north to south, but the orb around which they're walking is rolling like a ball instead of turning on its axis like a planet. So I'm thinking of this as planet versus, say, ball mode. And I know the names are silly, but um, they're easier to remember this way. It, it makes sense in an epistemological sense. Um, now there's also a third option, of course, that we've played with before, which is switching back and forth between this kind of horizontal and this uh, vertical uh, wall plane mode kind of place. And once again, we can take this into kind of a horizontal place where, you know, if we're looking straight at it, it looks like we're going counterclockwise in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in wall plane. And then when we switch around, it comes to a place where if you're looking down on it, it looks like it's going clockwise. Then we have uh, the, the, the lovely job of switching it back around again until it looks like it's going counterclockwise in relation to us, and then rotating it back around so that as you're looking down on it, it looks like it's going clockwise before coming back up and around. It's really, really hard to do in a horizontal plane, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do if, if the hand is moving around a vertical circle. Um, it winds up looking like this, where we kind of switch between anti-spin places and horizontal places. It's awkward, I'm not going to lie. Somebody wants to clean this up, i.e. E6, if you're watching this, I would love to see that. The way, incidentally, I'm determining all these is I actually took a piece of paper that on both sides of it had a pair of arrows spinning around in a particular direction, and I just reset at every place to see where the turn would take me. Um, so those are our three... The, 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 those are our three major axes around which we can rotate, and I hope you guys will see that it makes a lot of sense in terms of how we move kinesthetically to have them oriented by the hand path, by where the, uh, the axis of the arm is, and of course by uh, having an axis that is perpendicular to both of those places. Now here's where things get weird, because in each of these uh, particular combinations, uh, there exist two places where you can freeze the, uh, the turning of the axis and just kind of, if you would imagine that the planet stops rotating for a second, and all you have is the hand path taking uh, the poi along, always in the same plane, right? Which, you know, we already know some very obvious examples of this. If we go back to our, uh, our north-south pole arrangement, what this winds up looking like is what we've been calling uh, an isolated toroid flower, which is, you know, in vertical planes, it looks like this. 
in which case the poi plane always looks like it's oriented exactly the same way to the center observer. Here's the funny thing though. If we play around with this, we realize that this also crosses over with the kind of ball mode uh, version of our toroid flower that happens if we roll the plane over itself, and it has those moments where it's in, like on one side on the anti-spin, one side in spin, but otherwise uh, a vertical plane. And in fact, we could uh, we could approach this as saying, okay, I'm going to take my uh, my, my anti-spin toroid here. That was not an anti-spin. That was an anti-spin. And I'm going to find those moments, and I'm going to use those moments as an opportunity to switch the orientation of the rotation of my poi planes. Ah, interesting. So what other axes do these, uh, do these movements share? Well, uh, so if we're taking the north-south arrangement, the two major axes it can freeze on are the axis where it's in profile to us, like we discussed, the, the isolated version. And there's also a place where it can freeze, say, in what looks like a, uh, uh, a wall plane place to us, which, you know, we already know this because it has some crossover with this mode, which I've been calling the drill mode. That's the one where uh, the axis is always uh, parallel with the hand path. So there's a nifty kind of overlap there between uh, being able to go from kind of planet mode and switching it around and being able to switch it into that kind of drill mode because they both overlap on that same position. Awesome, right? And likewise, um, the kind of drill mode and the ball mode overlap at this place where they're kind of in the horizontal plane. And in fact, you can think of traditional flowers as being the place where drill mode and ball mode overlap. So what it breaks down to is uh, planet mode freezes in a place that looks like an isolated uh, toroid flower, and it shares that position with drill mode. Drill mode uh, shares that horizontal position that looks like standard flowers with, uh, with ball mode. And uh, when we go back to ball mode, we can once again go back to those straight vertical planes that it shares with planet mode. Planet mode also shares, uh, uh, well, actually no, that's, that's the complete circle. You can think of it as like a circle of fifths to go between all these different movements. And in that way, it has a lot in common with transition theory uh, between different timing and direction combinations, as Wells outlined it. So, um, this has already turned into a damn long video. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed it, and I hope you guys start playing around with these, because there's a lot of potential what happens when we start connecting these to each other and combining them with each other. So, uh, I will leave you guys to do that, and I will try and get it out of the cold, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.